All right. Great, thanks everybody. I'm Leo Leung. I'm the VP of Marketing for a company called Scality. What we provide is software-based scale-out storage uh, for petabyte scale types of applications. So today I'm going to walk through a little bit of our OpenStack approach, uh, some, uh, what we're seeing in the storage environment, as well as some use cases and case studies uh, of deployments of Scality. So uh, as, as much as I think we'd like to believe that we're in a world now where we have pure flexibility, where we have uh, the cloud-like aspects that we're looking for, what we're seeing in the market is sort of falling into the trap that we've been in for decades now, which is, well, maybe I need a different type of storage for every different type of use case or every different type of uh, requirement that the applications have. Okay, so, so while I think there are some vendors here that are talking about you know, one system that uh, is good for every single application, uh, what we see in practice is people starting to split into silos of different types of storage. Right? So while we have uh, increasing requirements of OpenStack, where you're talking about thousands of VMs, as well as tons and tons of application data, uh, again, I think we're starting to fall into the trap of uh, building many, many different storage silos, which leads to all the problems that people have had uh, for, for decades, where they have to manage all those silos. Uh, in addition, uh, while you're starting to see more and more adoption of software-defined and storage uh, architectures that are based on software, you still have lots of uh, uh, technologies that are very, very tied to hardware and tied to proprietary stacks. So I'm going to talk about that a little bit as well, uh, versus a, uh, an approach that gives you the economics that you're really looking for. So, uh, you know, again, in some ways, OpenStack is uh, trying to support different requirements, but also adding some complexity in terms of the different APIs, the different ways you want to manage your storage environment. Right? So uh, you're familiar with uh, a lot of these different uh, uh, projects, different services that are available to be able to handle your, both your ephemeral storage as, as well as your persistence. Okay? From, the, from the boot all the way to uh, your block storage or your volume uh, into your image repository as well as uh, now the file storage uh, service called Manila. Right? So lots of different types of services, lots of different things to think about as you're building your storage environment. <clears throat> when we look at the requirements, though, uh, another way to look at uh, why you would even think about needing all those things or needing different types of storage, uh, really the drivers uh, are the applications and the data types. Okay? So uh, in talking to customers, when you're thinking about images, it's really smaller scale uh, in the megabytes. When you start to get into storing whole catalogs, that's when you start to get into the gigabytes. Uh, but what we're really seeing is an explosion of the application data. Right? So not only are you talking about uh, retention of more and more data from these applications, but you're, you're also talking about larger and larger data sets. So uh, a classic example is media or video, where you're talking now about 4K frames that are each uh, 50 megabytes each, uh, going to the terabytes for an hour of content. Right? So large, large content, starting from the documents into uh, your video, your uh, IoT types of data, lots of types of stuff that drive the requirements around uh, the storage. And when you look at the difference uh, that, that block diagram I showed earlier, there have been various approaches to try to address these different types of data, whether you're talking about, again, dealing with the uh, actual uh, boot data, the ephemeral data, uh, all the way into uh, being able to store the application data, okay? uh, looking at object storage, looking at uh, different types of storage un uh, underneath. And now again, uh, moving into the file environment. It's interesting that uh, file was not a big uh, discussion point until very recently. Uh, but again, there's some use cases that require it. So one approach is to go and layer lots of different storage technologies underneath, right? All these different types of data, all these different types of protocols and requirements. And again, this is what we're seeing, falling into that trap of building many, many different silos to try to service uh, the different applications and the different requirements. Uh, we fundamentally believe that uh, it doesn't have to be that way. You uh, have technologies now that are able to encompass multiple use cases, multiple different types of data sets, uh, and reduce the complexity as opposed to increasing the complexity. What we see is very much uh, a world moving away from 
again, purpose-built types of storage for every different use case, every different application, right? So uh, in many of the customers we talked to today, it's, it's very typical to see three, four different types of storage, uh, tiers of storage, and in some cases, many, many more, if you're counting all the different uh, locations and facilities, right? Um, that's your classic SAN, NAS, multiple tiers of NAS, uh, some object and even tape in these environments. What we're seeing is a movement away from that into essentially a two-tier kind of world, where you, you're always going to have your very, very latency-sensitive types of applications, okay, where uh, that's really moving away from the SAN and into uh, your, your uh, for example, all flash array types of products. Okay, so certainly there's going to be a need for that, uh, but it's usually a smaller amount of data uh, relative to the overall data set. And uh, sometimes you need custom hardware okay, uh, to deal with it. Absolutely a need for that. Uh, for a lot of the rest of the types of data that I just talked about, whether you're talking about documents or images or backups uh, or large media types, you could really deal with it with uh, what we would call capacity-driven types of storage. Okay, so being able to encompass all those different types of files, all those different types of use cases into the exabyte scale uh, is what's available now, right? Five years ago, maybe not so much, but today you can absolutely do it uh, with various technologies that are available. Okay, so I sort of laid out some of the challenges earlier. You have this massive capacity growth, right? So typically people refer to growth at a 50% uh, type of growth. Uh, it actually varies greatly in the customers we deal with. In classic enterprises, we actually see it's more like a 10%, 15% growth every year. Whereas certain industries, whether you're talking about uh, some of the uh, genomics research, for example, media, uh, oil and gas, that's more like a triple digit type of growth in terms of data. So a big extreme in terms of growth, uh, but certainly a challenge for people. And uh, the desire is to be able to scale out a solution uh, without a lot of work, right? Being able to continuously grow that environment without new administrators, without taking the system down. Uh, second uh, is this silo problem that still exists, right? As much as we'd like to say that it does not exist, go into any enterprise today and you will see many, many tiers of storage, many, many islands that don't talk to each other that require separ separate maintenance. Uh, we believe it's possible to consolidate a lot of those things, uh, again, into something that can handle all the capacity requirements uh, that you need without adding uh, overhead, okay? Actually making the environment simpler. Third is the requirement for always on, okay? So uh, there's the classic three nines or five nines types of availability, which typically doesn't count maintenance. Uh, it's, no longer, uh, it's no longer adequate, okay? There's not a single one of you here that's gonna tolerate uh, a service being down for even a few minutes if you're trying to use it uh, in your day-to-day -day work life or even your personal life, right? So uh, the infrastructure to support it has to change. It cannot be a three nines or five nines types of infrastructure uh, any longer. And then finally, the economics. So uh, happy to talk about that in depth, but uh, what we see is when you talk about proprietary types of technologies, proprietary hardware, they use commodity components. There's usually a very big margin that's built into that, okay? Versus being able to buy software and run it on standard x86 servers, okay? So when you look at uh, a large storage vendor, Typically, you're talking about margins in the 50 or 60% range versus a server vendor where the margins are only in the 10% range. Okay, so there's a huge difference in terms of cost uh, when you're talking about proprietary storage hardware versus uh, even standard x86, even name brand x86. So uh, I represent a company called Scality. What we do is, uh, again, we provide a software-based storage solution uh, that addresses some of the things I just talked about, right? Uh, first is, again, this ability to run on standard commodity x86 hardware and standard Linux uh, to be able to build a massive type of scale environment. Uh, one of the interesting things you'll see as you start to roll out these solutions is, uh, you know, you're, you're going to have a very heterogeneous hardware environment, even if it's running commodity, okay? So having experience with those types of uh, scenarios is what's going to give you the reliability uh, and environment you want. So, for example, we have customers that are running five different generations of hardware, okay, completely different form factors under one, in, one system in production, okay? So just a, just a common uh, scenario we see in the environment, particularly over time. Second is the ability to create a very large pool of storage. Okay, so 
And that's not just capacity, but also the amount of objects that are in a system. So for example, we have a customer that has uh, over 60 billion objects in a single system. Okay? So not just capacity, but many, many, uh, possibly many small objects. Reliability. So reliability, not just from a uh, data protection perspective, but also from an availability perspective, from a fault tolerance, whether you're talking about software or hardware failures, uh, very, very key to this type of, uh, this type of uh, storage. Uh, performance. So you can certainly get performance uh, in many different ways. Uh, we believe that the architecture itself has to be very high performance, okay? Has to be able to serve many applications in parallel. When you're talking about uh, consumer clouds or you're talking about uh, video streaming, for example, very, very high performance requirements out of the storage, uh, and we can do that natively. Uh, and then finally, being able to support not just uh, archive types of use cases, but also uh, more tier one, uh, higher performance types of use cases. So again, the way we uh, have, have, uh, have worked with customers is absolutely there's a low latency type of requirement, and then a high capacity, high bandwidth type of requirement. We fall into that second category. Okay, so we, we've taken this ring architecture, the Scality Ring product, and we've uh, applied it to OpenStack. Okay, so we've been working uh, with some of the OpenStack services for close to three years now, starting with Cinder, uh, then uh, building up Swift support. Okay, so we fully support the Swift API, including all the uh, storage policies. Uh, announced Glance uh, earlier uh, in the year, and we now have a technology preview of a Manila uh, driver as well. All right, so. All the uh, APIs and protocols you're familiar with, you can leverage them on top of the storage platform that I just described. So talking uh, a little bit about a few, a few use cases, and I'll talk about some more generally uh, in terms of what Scality has done. So uh, recently, we've uh, been working with a large service provider around a very, very big uh, uh, file environment. Okay, it's a data as a service type of environment, uh, over 12 petabytes multiple sites, okay? Uh, they started with a different solution, uh, w wanted to go into production, moved into us. Again, seamless ability to take advantage of the OpenStack APIs, but change the backend. Uh, and now they're going into production with us. Uh, again, multi-site, they're using erasure coding across those sites, uh, and be able to support many, many different uh, clients hitting that same environment. So again, uh, what we've seen is you need the ability to scale, but you also need the ability to support performance scale, right? The ability to handle multiple clients uh, hitting the environment, reads and writes, uh, in a large scale. Second customer, uh, Numergy, uh, public cloud, IaaS provider, currently using Swift, uh, looking at different uh, implementations using OpenStack as well. So going into a broader set of use cases, so. Uh, where we came from, where Scality came from, is from the service provider space. So we have over 30 uh, customers using us uh, in production for email storage, right? Very tough workload. Small files, large files, many, many objects. Again, uh, customers in the tens of billions, uh, tens of billions of objects, um, as well as oftentimes multi-site, okay? So going left to right, you're talking about uh, large archives, again, oftentimes with very high bandwidth requirements. So, uh, for example, video production, right? Uh, again, you're talking about having to deal with not just larger content, but if you're uh, handling uh, video on demand, you have to, you're having to support binge watching, right? Producing 13 episodes or 22 episodes at a time. Massive uh, scale in terms of needing storage to support those environments. Uh, going to the second category, you have tons and tons of video on demand. So every geo that we're working in you have uh, really the end users saying, I don't want to watch broadcast anymore, right? I want to be able to watch content whenever I want it, which means storage, right? And you're not just storing the titles uh, that are available today, potentially you're recording for network DVR, right? You're recording personal programs that people want to watch later. Uh, all that requires storage, all that requires a huge amount of uh, bandwidth capability out of storage in addition to capacity. So Deluxe On Demand is a customer like that. Uh, as I said, lots of web and cloud services providers, many of them in the email space, but more and more into other areas. So uh, recently we've signed a document provider. Again, billions of documents 
uh, that they have to store for their customers, uh, mo most of which are law firms, right? Uh, another customer building a big radiology cloud, serving many, many private practices and hospitals uh, with radiological images, whereas in the past, literally still shipping things around, sometimes, uh, you know, through FedEx, sometimes through very, very uh, basic files, file stores. Okay, and then the last category I think is the most interesting is the notion of being able to leverage a, a unified platform across many different use cases. Oftentimes that first use case is a backup type of use case, archive, sync and share type of thing, but once you build the economics, once you build a platform that can handle that much scale, you start to get some uh, great uh, efficiencies of scale. So a little uh, plug about the company. We've been around again since 2009, so not a brand new uh, entity. Have had many customers in production for years. Our oldest customer is actually from 2010. Uh, has been uh, uh, actually 100% available that entire time. Okay, they've grown 20 times in capacity to over 10 uh, two petabytes. Uh, they've uh, had many many generations of hardware uh, live at the same time and retired hardware all available all the time, right? And I think that's a testament uh, to what we're able to do. Um, over 170 employees, uh, uh, and just recently got some additional funding. So check us out uh, if you're interested in working for a company like this. Uh, we're over at uh, booth T60, uh, right down the hall here. Um, happy to talk more about uh, your challenges, your use cases, your applications, try to figure things out. We're not a fit for everything, unlike what some other people might say here. Uh, but uh, happy to talk through some of the use cases you might have. I'll point you out to scality.com slash trial. Uh, completely free, you can actually just sign up and actually run the software in a completely hosted environment. So you don't have to stand up VMs, don't have to stand up hardware. You can try the technology yourself. Absolutely free, uh, scality.com slash trial. Thanks very much, and I'll take any questions on the side.